Castlevania Dracula X had the unenviable position of not only being released between Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night, but also having ever been released, period. It's not a stretch to say that most Castlevania fans simply do not like this title. They'll say, it isn't Rondo of Blood, or it isn't Castlevania IV. Everyone else will generally say something like, the game's too difficult. The final fight with Dracula is absurd. It demands too much of the player. How can I kill this boss when the floor one-shots me? Let's go back 100 years. Rondo of Blood has just been released to incredible fanfare. Oh wait, no it didn't. Almost no one owned a PC Engine. Super Nintendo nearly outsold it 5 to 1. Donkey Kong Country 1 nearly matched its sales, alone. But it is true that people that played this back in the day loved it. People that play Rondo today love it. I also really enjoy Rondo of Blood. The main takeaway here is that the game was loved, and while not everyone may have been aware that it even existed, those that were, were envious. You see, Rondo of Blood was not localized and was Japanese only. Consider as well, most of the Western market, as previously stated, did not have a PC engine. It would then make some sense for Konami to port this game over to the Super Nintendo, as it was a critically acclaimed game, and there was a need for a new Castlevania game on the Super Nintendo and there would be little overlap between the PC Engine audience and the Super Nintendo audience. Therefore, this could have been a fairly pragmatic port for Konami, and for Western fans of Castlevania who had no real opportunity to play Rondo of Blood. This all sounds wonderful, except for one little important detail. The PC Engine sold incredibly well in Japan, and apparently France, and so the Japanese audience would be more familiar with Rondo and its existence. This is why I think Nintendo probably pushed Konami into making a new title instead of allowing them to port Rondo to the Super Nintendo. Remember, this is when Nintendo could slap your dog's ball sacks around and you'd be grateful for it. Nintendo would also want an exclusive Nintendo experience, not something that you could just play on another competitor's console. Never mind that the entire Western market probably hadn't played Rondo of Blood and certainly did not have easy access to it. This is where I need to stop and say this is my unsubstantiated, bogus claim with absolutely zero evidence. I didn't even come up with it. I don't know who did either. I'm almost certain, however, that I saw a discussion about it on the Castlevania Dungeon Forum many, many, many years ago. Since reading it, though, is kind of coalesced and hardened into a belief. In fact, I'm willing to pin some of the negative aspects of the game on Konami designing it maliciously. I mean, what better way to get back to Nintendo than to have an inferior product for the Nintendo experience? Call me paranoid, but Konami does have a record of being spiteful and downright vengeful. This carte blanche for vengeance could explain why the developers would implement such aggravating snares into the game, like bosses having death throws that damage you, which primarily serves to negate a flawless victory, which negates a 1-up bonus for defeating the boss without taking any damage. It's worth noting that these final attacks are also present in Rondo of Blood. I'm also pretty sure that these last hits from the bosses are not lethal, but I swear I remember dying to one of these. Some platforms have weirdly precise jumps which serve no real purpose other than to snag the player's momentum and it just drags the whole experience down. Speaking of momentum, hallways are just crammed full of armored enemies that take way too many hits, and it will force you to a crawl as you slowly clear them away. And of course, obviously, most infamously, there is the Dracula fight. Or it could all be horseshit and just massive ineptitude. As far as Konami goes, I could honestly see it being either or and possibly both. One of my biggest complaints is that the game has about two seconds of invulnerability frames. Did I say two seconds? Because I meant two frames. I haven't been able to recreate it, but I swear I've had bats phase through me and hit me three times before. I used to think the low iframe count was intentional, but then, Rondo of Blood also has pretty low iframes. The difference is, it doesn't come up as often in Rondo, maybe because there isn't as many flying enemies every stage, which really are the enemies that seem to exasperate this problem. I honestly believe that if you increase the iframes by about two and a half, it would alleviate a lot of stress from the player in a meaningful way. It's just not fun getting comboed by a bat like this. You know, Symphony Knight also has low iframes. But it's not really a big deal in that game either, because the player is so immensely powerful and has so many options available to them that getting temporarily stun locked is not really a death sentence. It's just an inconvenience. And unlike in Dracula X, in Soten, you can restore your HP at nearly any point in the game. Don't 
time to discuss the final fight in Dracula X, which is Dracula. If you made it this far, this fight should be trivial, but I still have friends tell me they get hung up here. I read about it online. People will say, he teleports all over the place, I'm getting fireballed in my ass, I keep falling to my death. How am I supposed to fight this boss? He's impossible. Oh, there's a phase two? Oh my god, what am I to do? If you're having a problem in a game, you should treat it as a problem and troubleshoot it. Personally, I think the difficulty in this game is vastly overrated. I don't mean to sound elitist here, but as long as you have the ability to do some basic platforming and you have some patience, you can beat this game, and this boss for that matter. I'm also here to tell you, this fight is not hard. If you somehow made it past the werewolf and your hangup is Dracula, then I really am not sure what to tell you. The werewolf is a lot harder, so for phase one, you just need to chill out. You don't have to stay in one spot, but if you're really fucking up, I would recommend it. You should also grab the axe coming into this fight. One other thing, if you're too scared to whip fireballs, or maybe even caught out of position because you went chasing after Dracula, or whatever, you can just hold down. You don't have to leap over every pack of fireballs. You can just take the hits right on the face. Richter will of course flinch, but he's not going to get knocked back. This trick is also helpful elsewhere in the game. When Drac does materialize, throw your axes. You know, that's why we brought them. This does take some positioning and timing, but once you get used to it, you should be averaging two to three axes of teleport, which will speed up the fight significantly, assuming you get good teleports. Personally, at the end of phase one, I like to have Drac as far left as possible so that I have room for falling back. I like to retreat to the right because the far right pillar has a nice little niche for lobbing axes and because of how the platform is up against the pillar, it has some decent protection against fireballs knocking you off to your death. However, this is not a guarantee. You might find that Dracula still manages to knock you around and down to your death. Your options for Drac's fireball spam is to sink your axe throwing so that you clear them and kill him at the same time. Of course, you can also whip the fireballs if that's what you want to do. If you get out of sync or something happens, you can still hold down and use your health as an anti-knockback resource. Since remember, Richter will only flinch and not go hurtling backwards. You can also item crash, which gives you invulnerability frames, but I would not do so unless it was absolutely dire. After Dracula does his fireball spam, he'll drop down to the platform in front of him, advancing towards you. Then he does some kind of sonic boom attack, if your damage is good, he'll probably only get two of these off. Personally, I just take the damage from these and hold down. I believe there is a small boom and a large boom. I'm not sure about their damage values respectively, but I do know that they hurt. You do not want to be tanking a lot of these. I would save an item crash for one of these if you felt like you were not going to be able to dodge or tank them over using an item crash and drags fireballs. If, for some reason, you find that Dracula has cornered you, that means your damage was either low or your positioning from phase 1 to 2 was bad. It's going to be really tricky trying to get under and around him. You'll probably end up getting clipped by his big toe and then falling to your death. I don't really have too much advice on this one, except just to be fearless and good luck. GamePro criticized that the stage design fails to encourage re-exploring stages. The bosses are not challenging enough, and the graphics and gameplay are primitive. No knockout mode 7 stages, no rotating rooms, like in Castlevania 4, your character is also very small. The play engine feels like it's right out of the 8-bit versions. The play engine? Oh, uh, what? It's critics like this that ruin everything. That rotating room in Super Castlevania 4 makes me physically fucking sick. To even suggest that having a mode 7 stage would somehow elevate this game is just incredible. Sure, he mentions other shit, but why even bring mode 7 up? I mean, honestly, I forgive everything here except mode 7 and that the graphics are primitive? Are you fucking serious? The character is too small? What's the matter, Grandpa? You need some glasses? Primitive graphics while praising Super Castlevania 4, a game that has a JPEG for a boss? 
I'm sorry, Castlevania 4 is an ugly fucking game. In contrast, IGN's retrospective on the series referred to it as still one of the best traditional Castlevania games, and that it holds its own in terms of graphics, including a brighter color palette and Mode 7 graphics, but suffered from weak AI and bad level layout. Wait, IGN like this? Never mind, Dracula X fucking sucks. 